If you enjoy the channel and our video content and would like to support us, you can do this in a couple of ways. You can sign up to our Patreon site which is a monthly subscription to one of our four tiers, each giving you something different from early access interviews up to exclusive unseen footage. There's also the option of a one-off donation via PayPal which allows you the option to donate an amount of your choice. Both options really help to keep this channel going and to continue putting out regular content for you good folk. So please take a look at aircurrentreview.tv forward slash donate and I thank you in advance. Thank you and enjoy. We were told to go to a tanker because we needed gas to get back to the ship. We were going to be the last two planes to land that morning because they shut the flight deck down for the day because they got to reposition, maintenance, do everything. We were, we we're basically the late night, early morning carrier. So we go to the tanker and the tanker can't accept um, uh, probes. You know, it was only set up for Air Force style. They didn't have the capability yeah. to do it. So we had no gas. So we ended up diverting into Kuwait where the third Marine uh, air wing was. And, and it was a beautiful day, but we looked down and there's a sandstorm blowing through. I mean, bad. But from the top down, you could see the field, but horizontal, the visibility was really, really restricted. And I'm like, wow, man. And by, the, by now, we're skosh on gas. We're both, we're both pretty much emergency fuel. Oof. So I, I talked to the controllers at Kuwait, and uh, I said, hey, listen, you know, hey, we're, we're a flight of two. We're, we're off to Connie, but whatever. We're, we're declaring emergency fuel. You know, we need to land. And he's like... He's like, uh, say, say minutes left in gas. And so, you know, I did a little quick mental math for Marines and came up with, we got about 30 minutes left of gas. And he goes, okay, well, join the line. There's six people in front of you that are lower than you. And I'm wow. like, oh, no. So six F-16s were low on gas in the same sense. So we got in a big conga line of planes getting vectored around to land in a sandstorm with hardly any gas. And I'm thinking... This is going to be it for me. I'm going to end up punching out of this airplane because I ran out of gas, you know, not because of anything else. So it, it worked out. We land, and I let him land first. He was a little lower than me, and we land, and, you know, we spent the day in uh, Kuwait hanging out with the uh, Marines, so it was kind of good because we couldn't go back to the ship. The deck was closed. We just went out the next night. We just sat around there all day. So. Yeah, so <laughs> just on a side note, you know, so, yeah, when you land, do you all just, yeah, just hang out like it's normal? Uh, like, oh, do you talk about, you know, what you've just done? Or is it like, come, let's go for uh, lunch or dinner or whatever? Well, how does that work? You know, a little bit of both. A lot of times people are resting and they're in their battle rhythm, right? You know, mm. and so we land and we don't have anything. All the people on the ground all have, uh, they carry around what they call mop gear, basically uh, hazmat suits or chemical warfare suits and gas yeah. masks with them while they're walking around because there's a real threat of a gas attack right by by iraq they're into doing weird stuff like that so we didn't have anything me and uh me and my wingman just had the uh, flight suits on her back and so we go walking around and uh and we run into people we know and we're chit-chatting and then we go over to the chow hall to have lunch you know funny story me and my wingman are eating lunch sitting in the uh chow hall and it's packed right and everybody, you know, we, we definitely were the people that were different. You know, we didn't have patches. We didn't fly with patches or anything on our flight suits. You know, oh, we right. showed up there. And, um, and so we're, we don't really know where to go. And people are helping us out. A buddy of mine from Third Ma, another Hornet pilot that was laying base. I rented him. He took us over there. So we go sit down to eat. And he, me, me and my wingman are sitting there eating. And all of a sudden they have a... Uh, a uh, alarm or siren goes off, which is a potential for a gas attack. They think there might be a Scud missile coming cool. towards the base. So everybody in the entire chow hall, it's probably 200 people, everything goes silent. Everybody pulls out their gas mask no and way. throws them on. <laughs> and everybody's sitting there in dead silence in this room with gas mask on. And me and my wingman are just sitting there looking at each other, just like I am right now. Just we have nothing. And we're just looking. And I know, you know, I think we all know. There was, I'd been flying, this was like day number five of the war, maybe six even. 
and I had been up north and back, and I knew there was no scud coming in there. I knew that some overzealous person probably flipped the alarm because he saw a blip on a radar, you know. And so I remember just sitting there, and the guy across from me, who I don't even know, is just he goes, sucks to be you, you know, said that to me. <laughs> and I just laughed. I go, no, it sucks to be you because you're wearing that for nothing, man. <laughs> And so we just sat there for about 10 minutes until they sounded the all clear. And then we all Back started. Back to your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a funny little situation. 